Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I make these adorable three vintage dresses. They're unfinished projects that have been sitting there forever and I'm finally doing it's them. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. And we are back again um, trying to finish all these unfinished projects. Those, uh, I've done 11 so far. Not that I'm counting, I'm absolutely counting. So, but there's, yeah, feels like there's a million to go. So um, what I did was I remembered that in the scraps, I've got a bag of um, mustard colored scraps and there's quite large chunks of fabric in there. So what I thought, because this is too overwhelming, there's just way too many here. So I thought um, there's three bits of rather large, um, yeah, or two or three bits of rather large fabric in there. So I'll get out the three dresses that have mustard in them um, and use these scraps to make the, cut the extra pieces that I need. So I've got the bird one on the left and then I've got this one in the middle has two different fabrics and then I've got the moss one on the right. And yeah, these three um, are, they've got fabric in the scraps one. So I'll start with this one. This is a Vogue a V9106 from 1950, uh, 1939. It's an adorable pattern, but um, the bodice is quite fitted and I want something baggier. I got, just got out all the pieces. So I've got the front, the back of the bodice, two sleeves and I've got the skirt. I didn't cut the pockets for this one. It's just going to be really plain and simple. I'm not sure about using the uh, sleeves, but I'll keep them anyway. So I've got out, this is the folded up bit of scraps. So I'll just open that out. And um, actually it's a massive piece. It's big enough to cut another panel, a whole nother panel of the skirt. The skirt is two panels, um, sort of, yeah, it's a really simple skirt, like, um, you know, depression era dresses were. And so, yeah, I think I'll cut another one and that way it'll be a much fuller skirt. And with the bodice bits, they don't fit on the fittest, fitted bodice, which isn't a surprise. So I think what I'll do is I'll cut out the extra panel for the skirt. And then with the sort of triangle leftover bits, I'll cut out just straight panels. And um, with the front panel and the back panel, the existing ones, I'll just maybe cut them at the center, add a panel, then there'll be enough room to cut out the, um, the new front and back panels. I think I'll do that. I mean, I could just use the scrap of fabric to cut out whole front and back of the bodice pieces. That would be the simplest thing. But um, I kind of like the idea of using what I have because it's a dress from 1939 and make, do and mend was very much the thing then. So, yeah, I think I'll do that. I'm still not sure about the sleeves, though. I love this fabric so much. It de needs an iron. Okay, so the next one, so that's what I think I'm going to do with the first dress. The next one is a Butterick from 1950s, B6055. And this one, I didn't have enough fabric of either of these. So I cut out the front and most of, and the whole of the skirt from the brighter one. And then this darker one, ketchup and mustard flowers. That was going to be the collar and um, the pockets and all the details like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've got the pockets, I've got everything. But, yeah, I just don't like this bodice either because the shoulders are very boxy and big and they just completely overwhelm me. I just want a plain, I think a much plainer, looser fitting bodice will just turn it into an everyday day dress that I will actually wear, whereas something I might wear once every two years. Because this fabric isn't directional, I'm going to be able to cut the bodice out of it. Um, there's going to have to be a sew line which is unfortunate. I hate having a seam line in the front of a dress or the back of a dress. I just don't like it. I just like to have side seams. But you've got to do what you've got to do. So I'll do that for this one. And then the back, um, the back as it is, is quite a large bit and it's got darts in it. So perhaps if I undo the darts, maybe it'll just fit. 
maybe it's not directional either so I can turn it upside down because those broad shoulders I'll be able to get the bottom of the bodice maybe he's hoping so that's my plans for that one and this is the third one this is also another Butterick 6055 um, and I love the pockets in this one as well so I don't really have very much extra fabric for this one I thought I did damn I must have used it for something um, yeah I think I used it for the patchwork dress at the end of last year I do have these ones which I could sort of do insert panels in the front and the back of the bodice but I don't know they're kind of jarring I what I love about this fabric is it's like you know when you're looking after a toddler and they're just sitting there singing to themselves or something that's what this fabric reminds me of it's hilariously weird and it's just these birds sort of chirping away to themselves and I love that about it. I love how self-contained it is. So I don't really want to use another fabric on it. But um, yeah, so I'll try. The problem is it's directional. So I can't do the same trick I did with the other one. With this one, I'll have to, um, I don't know, I'll have to use the collar sections and um, cut a strip out of that and then add it into this like an insert to the front of the bodice and the back of the bodice yeah I think I guess I'll do that oh it's gonna look a bit dodgy isn't it well I've got some pl little plastic bubble beads um, in sort of that aqua and that really bright green so maybe after I've done it, if the seam lines look too dodgy, then I'll um, stitch them on to the seam lines. And because they're plastic, they'll, you know, in theory, be machine washable rather than the glass beads that I usually use. So I'll do that. And I also need a few little, two little inserts at the, si at the hips for this skirt because it's quite fitted. So now that I had plans for all three of them, I set about cutting out all my pieces. For the moth one, I cut out that extra panel for the skirt. I'm still going to have to unstitch the, um, undo the skirt because it's basically already made the skirt. It was just room for the zipper and all the seams are being finished. So I have to carefully undo them. I've cut out all the bits. I just need to sew them together for the bodice. So um, yeah, once they're sewn together, I'll cut out the actual bodice. But as you can see, I've got the orange plain cotton for the lining. And yeah, I just think it's going to go really well. The next one I did was this one and this wasn't directional. So I just turned, flipped it upside down and cut out the front piece. For the back piece, I didn't use that ketchup and mustard floral one. I decided that I really like the pink in this. That's kind of why I bought it in the first place because I love the hot pink and the magenta mixing with that sort of pukey mustard color. I decided that I'll, I'll do a magenta lining and also um, the back of it will be magenta as well. So, and yeah, so I'm just gonna use this fabric here. And the skirt is just going to have a couple of inserts of that. And I guess, yeah, I won't be using this fabric at all. I do have pockets out of this. So I guess I'll make a patchwork dress and use the pockets on that. I don't know. And now the little birdie fabric. I cut out the strips for that and straighten them out. And so, yeah, I've got a left half, right half center panel to insert. So it's wide enough to cut out the back bodice and the front bodice. And um, I also did a cut out bright blue. This is going to be their lining. It's fun for the lining, but I think it would have been really jarring as part of the outer. And for the birdie dress, I also have to do the same thing where just put little inserts in the skirt so that they're big enough because I'm using, making a bodice that's really quite baggy. So it increases the waistline somewhat. Okay, it's time to get the sewing machine out and sew all these bits together. I will be back once I've done that. Once I machine sewed them, then I pressed them. So I did that for all of them. I also pressed the skirts and ironed the patches that I'm going to use to um, make inserts out of. So, yep, those were the two bits for that one, the two bits for the moth. I also um, did up the, uh, sewed up the 
top for the other one with the magenta at the back. So the lining is in that one. That one's using the burrito method. And I'm really happy you can't even really see the center front seam on that one. I'm really, really happy with it. That's why I made it up because I was a bit concerned and I wasn't sure whether I'd have to sort of tweak it in some way, but I really like it the way it is. So these are the three skirts that I ironed and I cut down and I think you can see on the birdies one, I had to actually sew two bits together for each of those inserts. And then the, um, yeah, so for the birdie one, I'm doing tall, thin inserts. And then for this mustard and magenta one, I'm doing long, um, shallow or inserts so I just want to see which one of those works better and um, yeah you can sort of see I've sewn two bits together and for one side and two bits for the other side and the other one of course I have to unpick a whole line and I'll sew in an additional panel I think that one's going to be really nice I've got two other fabrics I think that I cut um, the 1939 dress out of the um, grey one with seeds on it and the um, sort of periwinkle blue one with um, pink flowers on it. They're the same sort of fabric, like the same length of fabric. So I should probably have the same amount of spare fabric. So yeah, if if the moth one works out, I'll do the same for those two. Anyway, so, um, oh, uh, so I cut out the two tops uh, the front and the back out of the birdie fabric and I cut out the front of the moth fabric but the back I had to sew on an additional panel at the bottom oh my god this one has got like 50 billion pieces to just get one piece anyway I eventually cut out the back bit now it's time to sew the bodices together Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. These are adorable. So this is the birdie one and that's quite cute. But this one, oh my goodness, I'm in love. It is, I mean, obviously it's not perfect. Those seams are um, not symmetrical and the back is just hilarious. It's like six bits and it's an absolute train wreck. But this dress in general, it's just absolutely perfect. See, this is what I mean about it being a train wreck. That bit's off at a different angle. But what are you going to do? It's a dress made of scraps. But um, yeah, oh, this is so pretty. So next I had to do the skirt. So um, I unpicked one of the seams of the skirt and then added in the third panel. So just pinned that in. Um, into the other two and then machine sewed that in there and once the skirt was made then it was time to attach the skirt to the bodice and um, oh my goodness look at this it's perfect it's so pretty Ugh, I gotta do the other two now well, that's unfair. It makes them sound terrible. They are. They're absolutely adorable. But the point was, um, each time I start an episode, I have an idea of what I want, you know, the best possible scenario. And this is it. This is the perfect dress. I mean, obviously, I need to, you know, not use scraps of fabric to make the bodice. But um, the silhouette of it, it's, um, it's just adorable. It's what I was looking for. It's so pretty. It's not too flattering, but it's very, very vintage. I love it. And normally when you find what you're looking for, you just sort of, you know, end up the video, round up the video. But I have the other two dresses to go. And because these have inserts, they're going to take longer than the other one did. Anyway, there's a million ways to do inserts. I've got two dresses, I'll do two ways. First way is finish the skirt, then attach it to the bodice. So slit both side seams um, down and insert, uh, sew the insert in, then pleat it on to fit the skirt. The second way is you sew the middle of the front to the bodice, the middle of the back of the skirt to the bodice, and then you sew in the inserts. That's kind of the way you change a ready-made dress. The second method is more complex, but if you've never done an insert before and are really unsure, it helps you visualize what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so first we'll do the birdie one with the long inserts. 
In hindsight, they were too long. I should have trimmed them, shortened them, and then angled them into a so it was just a tr smaller triangle basically. But anyway, um, so you just pin them in and then stitch them in and then attach the skirt to the bodice. And they're not great, but the pockets are going to cover them anyway. So I just left it as it was I'm a little bit. I just want these done. <laughs> so then I sewed the bodice to the skirt and that one's done. I have hand sewing to do, but all the machine sewing's done. So the next one, this is um, probably the easier way to do it. It might take a little longer, but I think for most people it would be easier. So undo your stitches down past where your triangle insert is going to go and yeah I had all these beautifully hand finished seams so I was upset about that but I got over it then um, the back has two notches the front has one notch line up the back middle of the bodice and the skirt pin them and the front middle of the bodice and the skirt pin them and then just pin like almost to the edge but leave like an inch on each edge and then sew them. Just make sure you leave a little bit unsewn on each edge because that's where you're going to put in your insert. So once you've machine sewn it, just check it and make sure there's no glitches or, you know, um, puckers or anything like that. So once that is done, then sort of open it out so that your um, insert bit, where you need to put your insert, is all flat and you can see what you have to do. So I've got two triangles, but they're not, they're sort of vaguely the right size. They're big enough, but I have to trim them down. So it's laying flat. So find the center of your insert bit and pin it to the center of your gap in your skirt. And the pins just tell me where the seam allowance is. So you can't just cut your insert to match exactly the skirt has to have seam allowance and the insert has to have seam allowance on each side. So that's four lots of seam allowance. So, yeah, so I've just sort of worked out where I my small insert bit will be, where the edges will be, and I pinned it. So this is how big my insert with seam allowance on each side needs to be. So I've got two identical bits. So um, I'm going to cut out the bottom one first. Oh, and this is me just double checking that it's the right size. So it's got enough seam allowance on both sides. Yes, it's the correct size. Yes. So this is my second bit and it's just going to be easier to cut the bottom one. So I cut that to the exact right size and then I unpin the top one and I cut that to the exact right size too. Okay, so scraps go over into the scrap bag and now it is time to pin these in and sew them. So you just pin one side, then you pin the other side. Once it's pinned, it's nice and straight, check it. Then you very carefully sew it. Don't go right down to the bottom because you'll just muddle and you'll, um, yeah, you'll get it wrong. So go down and sort of except sew it except for like the last half inch and then do the second side and sew it a little bit lower then turn the skirt upside down and sew the side seam up yeah, that's how you get everything to meet and then you turn the dress out just to check it and um, if it's fine it's fine if it's not you do have to unpick it and do it all over again if you can't do it with the machine because it is a little tricky then just hand sew it it's absolutely fine and then just reinforce it and then once that's done you pin your bodice to the skirt and then you sew it and once you've done one side and um, obviously just check it once you've done one side then go round and it is time to do your second side the insert for that one so it's basically the same but it's easier because you don't have you're not cutting your two triangles down into bits you've already got it so all you have to do is pin it in and carefully machine sew one side but not right down to the bottom then you carefully machine sew the second side a little bit further down and then you turn the seams so that the two side seams are what you're sewing and yeah you then you sew them up and you sort of end up with a triangle sewn in perfectly. 
then you sew the bodice to the skirt and just go round again to reinforce it then turn it all inside out and you hand stitch down the lining over all those raw seams to cover everything um, but I'm not going to do that hand sewing just yet we'll just pretend I have okay so um yeah there we go so that's that one done and uh, I still have the pockets to do for the other one so um yeah goodness this is never ending so I just um turned them in the correct way and ironed them pressed them into the right shape then pinned them on the dress one on either side over the inserts and um yeah now it is time to show you the finished dresses this is still my favorite one this moth one it's just it's so adorable i love it so much if you wanted a more fitted bodice just use any vintage vogue um yeah fitted bodice and um yeah, you could do one with a zip, but I was trying to make a pullover dress and you can't really see those bottom three bits. They look terrible when it was laying on the um, workbench, but when it's actually on, you can't really see them, especially like I've just got a ribbon on here, but when you put an actual sash or a belt around it, you really can't see it at all, which I knew that would be the case, but it still looks hilarious on the coat hanger. Anyway, so oh, I love this dress. I want to make like a million of them. It's just so perfect. It's lovely. I also have a shirt with these cute little puffy sleeves. So I think one of the times I try this next, I might do not these sort of plain sleeves, but I might do a slightly puffier one. Oh, this is what it looks like without the 1950s petticoat underneath it. Still gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Okay, it is time to put that, take that one off, the mannequin, and um, show you these two. So this is what that one looks like without the sash and this one with the sash. It obviously looks absolutely a hundred a thousand percent better with the sash and this one has the petticoat 1950s petticoat underneath it those pockets are going to look better when I finally sew them on but um yeah it it looks nice enough that birdie print looks so much more vibrant and adorable up close and it just looks sort of like a faded lemony um mustard from far away so yeah I don't know it, it just looks so pretty up close that from far away it's kind of disappointing anyway so then I put my favorite dress in the background and um yeah here we go group shot I have yeah I'm really happy so I've got five of the b double six double sevens um with sleeves then in the next um, UFO episode, I made six of the sleeveless B6677s and ruby dresses. And now I've got, oh, i still got all those shirts to go. Oh my goodness, it really is never ending. But anyway, now I've done three of these other vintage ones. I'm so pleased with my progress. It's exhausting, but it's definitely worth the, <laughs> the effort. And um, yeah, I really like them. They're so different. Like they're all mustard dresses, but they're all so different. And I'm really glad of that. Um, I obviously love the way this one turned out. Absolutely love it. Um, these other two, I'm, yeah, a bit disappointed with both of them. I mean, they're fine, but I think I've got another four or five of these ones so um yeah I'm not going to make them up the same way I've made these ones up this one I have I think I've got three five more of this one god just don't cut out excess amounts of dresses just cut one at a time for crying out loud learn from my mistakes because clearly I won't anyway so these three I'm pretty sure they were all three yard cuts and like this moth one and those ones were a smaller cuts. So um, there's two there. There's a, a sort of historic print one and a, and a green one. Those ones I can just add more black to, I'm pretty sure. Whereas, and the other three, I'm going to try and make them like the moth one. Whereas this one here, this um, Butterick vintage dress from the 1950s. This is the pockets and the spare fabric. So I've got this mustard fabric. So I think I'll make um, the a whole new dress with the skirt that's mustard, 
the bodice that's the floral one and then I'll put the floral pockets over the top of the um, skirt but I think I'll make the skirt like the moth one because I love I'm just in love with that skirt so the other B6055s. I mean, yeah, I, I'll wear this one, but I don't want to just make five more, four more like this. I'm happy to have more moth ones. That one's gorgeous. It's got three panels in the skirt. I think I could even go four panels in the skirt. That would be adorable. So, um, yeah, I think what I'll do with these other ones is um, with the orange one, I'll add orange and coral skirt panels because I don't like the ones I just made with only two skirt panels yeah I'll make that and then the ladybug one I'll add red panels and maybe some black panels as well that'll be cute oh and a black cape that'll be make, make it even more ladybuggish and with that one I'll add that denim color and these two I think I'll just combine the two of them and make one dress out of them because I really love red and beige and mint and bright green together I just think it's adorable so hopefully they'll mesh well and um yeah and that way I'll still get dresses that I want but I won't be really wasting anything I'll just be adding stuff adding value sort of thing so yeah I think that's that's a whole bunch of new episodes that I have to do but you know at least I'm chipping away at all these unfinished projects and getting there and this one oh my gosh I still got that metallic green fabric that I wanted to make a vintage dress out of I think I might make a vintage dress like this one because it's fabulous and working with the metallic fabric you have to stabilize it before you work with it so I might just do a whole episode where I yeah sort of talk talk through the process of using unstable fabric to um yeah you know putting cotton on the back of it and how to cut it out and etc etc anyway um yeah thank you for watching that's definitely the end of this episode I'm not making any more stuff I've got loads of hand sewing to do but mm, I'll do that another day anyway yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> witnessing my absolute pain and getting these three dresses made. And um, oh, this moth one. Oh, I just love it so much. So, yeah, I'm going to go. But next time, there will be more unfinished projects being finished. Oh, it's never ending. Seriously, do not cut out dresses that you aren't going to make up immediately. Learn from my terrible mistakes. Anyway, happy sewing. <laughs>